Hey everyone, my name is Rachid Jan and welcome to yet another video. The agenda for this video is my competitive programming template, which looks something like this. It's on GitHub. And what I do is I use this before solving any problem on code forces, code chef, hacker, and etc. This is my boilerplate code with which I start. And in my main function, I do nothing but um, I have this solve function which loops in for test cases. And I always start writing my code in solve. And this is how it's structured. Like for example, in top I have some hash defined macros and at the end I have the implementations of functions so that the readability of my code is still clean. Like it's all the implementation. I want to use it, but I don't want to interfere that with my readability over code. And that's why I keep it down below. And uh, in the solve function, I start writing the code. So that's what I'm going to do. Walk you through my template. You should cherry pick whatever good stuff you find from it. And talking about good template is really subjective, but I can have few points if you ask me which template is bad. So if you have a segment tree, for example, inside your template, it's like really useless and it does not help. Um, if, if your template is decreasing your readability, so again, it's not a good thing. And if it's not generic enough, again, it's bad. So we'll deep dive into all these things as we progress in this video. But the next thing that I want to talk about is what are the parts of my template that I really like. So the first point is definitely the debugging skills, which, it, which are enhanced. And uh, what I mean by that is if you want to print out some variable value, you would do something like this. Your, the variable name is something which you will write on your own and it takes a bit of time. What I do is I use a macro which allows me to use it something like this. I just have to pass in the variable which I want to debug and it will beautifully print its name as well. So it enhances the deb debugging power of my code. The other part which I really like is the general input. Like if you are using CNX, you might be getting time limit exceeded because it's slow. So you might probably switch to scanf and if that does not work, you have to switch to get care unlocked. Now what I use is I use SI and whatever I want, I can change it to C in scanf or get care unlocked whenever I want. So that's another something which is about talking in terms of generic input. Other thing which is really good is about the easy STL syntax, which becomes off if you use my template. Now to create an array is, is as simple as vector of int is short for VI. And if you have to sort it, I have a macro sort all, which does it for me. So this is some idea of what you are going to see in this video. And uh, let's start with the demo now. Um, so as you can see, uh, it has a lot of hash defined macros. I have one for for loops, like it takes a lot of time to write for loops. And that's why I have these two uh, macros, which allow me to loop from zero to n in ascending order. And the capital FO is something which uh, allows me to loop from K to n in both ascending as well as descending order. So this is a bit of jargon code, which you might not understand, but that's what it does. Then I have LL for long, long, again, very useful to save uh, int overflows. Then I have a bunch of macros which deal with the standard input and output, um, taking input and then writing back. Then this is where the debugging power comes into play and hash X is used to print the variable name, which is really cool. It saves a lot of time. Then I have something for pushback. It's used for vectors. Make pair is used to make a pair. Then uh, F and S are used to access the first and second element of pair and all is nothing but the begin and end of any collection if you are coming from java background but for c++ it can be set vector map and etc clear is used to clear let's say um, a vector or int something like that and sort all is as you, uh, as i mentioned before to sort an array then tr is used for iterating on a set like typing this much takes time so to save that time i use this macro and uh, C++ is getting better day by day. So as syntax gets better, some of these macros I have not used a lot in the past. And at some point of time later, I might even delete them from my template as well. Now pi is again a constant which I have defined over here. And then I have few for collections like vector of int and then pair of int int is p double i. Then if I want to create a vector of pair of ints, it's something like this, as you can see. So this is the overall stuff which is lying over here. And as I have mentioned before as well, um, I do have function definitions at the end, but function declarations are over here in one line so that 
it keeps my code clean. Then a mod is something which you use a lot in competitive programming. And this is what this mod is showing. 10 to the power 9 plus 7, which you can change based on question. And then I have a global array, which is mostly used for taking input and storing it. And this is for graphs. Now, one thing to notice, uh, DFS and IP graph is used for taking input of graph and performing a DFS traversal. Most of this code stays same and that's why I keep it in template. It might make sense for you to not keep it and not clutter your template. So it's your choice if you want to keep it or not. But for me, what I do is I simply go to main and uh, if it has multiple test cases, I do a CNT. Otherwise, if there is a single test case, you can delete this line, something like that. And as I'm saying, then I go to the solve function and I r start writing my code. So just to demonstrate the power of this, I have a template demo file, which I'm going to use. Um, let me just close this first. Template demo, yep. And if you go to solve, you can see that I'm doing a bunch of stuff. What I'm doing initially is I'm taking input as an integer n, and again, SI is remember scanf. So I'm taking input, then I'm debugging that. So this should print n equals what? What was the user n value which was given from input? Then I have a four demo, which is nothing but it's taking a matrix of n cross n size as input. So there will be n square integers in the standard input, which we are going to um, read and store it into our matrix A. And as you can see, it takes double for loops in this fashion. But if I have to do it my way, like for example, if you have to compute the sum, I can simply do 4IN, 4JN, which is really the same as doing these two lines. So this is exactly same to this. So that's what I'm doing over here and sum plus equal to AIJ. And it really becomes clean for me to read this instead of this. And it's quite faster. So again, as you can see, depth sum will print a beautiful method that sum is this, which again makes your debugging really easy. Otherwise, if you will just get um, some number. It does not convey what is it. So uh, similar to 4, like what if you want to iterate not from 0 to n, but let's say k to n. So that's where 4 comes into picture and it can handle descending order traversal as well. So let's say if you want to print every row of the matrix in reverse order, I'm iterating on rows. Oops. So I'm iterating on rows and then for every row I am printing that in reverse order. So n minus 1, 2 minus 1. So this will print every row in descend, uh, not descending order, but reverse order. And then the, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So moving on to the next one, talking about modulo, um, A star B, if you are doing multiplication in C++, it might happen that for greater ends, it might cause an overflow. If the overall value exceeds two to the power 32, it might not fit in int range. And if you talk about something like two to the power thousand, and you can deal with such numbers in competitive programming especially and that's why this modulo or mod value comes into picture like they want to calculate huge values but they want to do that modulo something so that the overall result fits into the c plus plus int range and here is an example of that i am using the function mpow over here which is quite handy and defined all the way down right as you can see so this performs base to the power expo uh, exponent in log n time which is quite fast and it uses binary exponentiation to do that. So this is one function which you will of course use a lot and that's what I'm using over here. Computing to the power thousand is quite huge, for example, and I can show you that um, if you just give me a second. So two to the power um, 10 is 1024, but if you make this thousand, it's quite big. It's huge, right? So if you want to compute this value, you can do that in C++ if you do the modulo, oops, so two to the power 100 is this, 1000 is this, and let's say you want to do this modulo. So this becomes 10 to the power nine plus seven. And this is what should be printed if I run the program. So let's quickly do that as well, actually. So you can see that it's printing t equals one, and if you'll go to main, um, I have actually deb t, which is that, that is why it's printing t is one and I have commented this line. So it's saying that there is only one test case. Now quickly go to solve. And if you will go to solve, you can see that it's waiting for user input on n. So let's say we want to input matrix of three cross three size. So n is three. And then probably we can do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
And if I do that, it prints the sum as 45 as we have seen in the code. Like right over here, depth sum, that's what happened. Sum is 45, it's beautifully printed. Then we printed the matrix in uh, reverse order. As you can see, 3, 2, 1, 6, 5, 4, and 9, 8, 7. Then it computed the MPOW value, which is same as what we saw above. I can show you that as well. So this is same as this value. This and this is same. So this function is also working correct. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. I, I do have few other things to talk, like for example, C++ STL the syntax really becomes quite easy. So if you want to have a vector or I mean list of pairs, so this is a list of pairs and it's quite easy to store in VPII. Instead, if you were not using a template, you would have to type vector, pair, int, int, and something like that. And if you use C++ 11 compiler or before that, I mean, so this will throw a compilation error. It should be something like this. Otherwise it reads it as a right shift operator. So yeah, these are some of the things which are quite painful and uh, that's why I use template. Again, sorting is very easy now. And if you sort this, uh, it's a list of basically the first number and its square. So minus three, nine, 10, 100, and 636. So if I s do sort this, you will see that minus three should come first, then one, then six, and then 10. And that's what we can see over here. Uh, I, I don't think I have printed that. So let me first compile this. So T is one, it's waiting for N, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, as you can see. So this is printing them in ascending order uh, because we have sorted it. And that's what we can see. Minus three is coming first, then one, then six, then 10. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much about it. I hope this was useful. And um, uh, to sum, sum this up, what I would do is <coughs> go to the ending section. Uh, the ending notes, I would say, use your own version of the template that works for you. It's an iterative process. I have built this template over quite a few years and I keep on editing it whenever I feel so. Uh, one important thing to note, however, is use Please, please use normal C++ syntax in coding interviews, especially never use something like FOIN just to increase the interviewer by your speed. They do not care about that speed uh, if you're using, if you're writing code in a fashion which they cannot understand. So please keep this in mind. I remember that in the spirit of impressing the interviewer in terms of your speed of writing code, um, it, it's a bit, uh, I would say, motivating for you to think that you should use your template even in coding interviews. Please do not do that. Other than the other than that, uh, I would say the template is available if you want to have a look uh, at that. And if you have any thoughts, uh, make sure to comment them below. And if you want further updates, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon so that I can see you in the next one. That's pretty much about it, guys, in this video. And if you want to support this channel and plan to use these products, make sure to use the coupon Rachet to enjoy our discount and support this channel. I will see you in the next one, guys. Till then, bye-bye and happy coding.